Okay, the appointed hour is here, and so we'll call our meeting to order. Uh, item number two is to approve the minutes of our last trust meeting. Second. Cast your votes. It's unanimously approved. Uh, number three is approve the trust budget for 2017. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair, and uh, happy to be here this morning, and also happy to present the uh, 2017. A budget to you this morning. I have a short presentation before I ask you to consider to approve the budget. If you'll notice in the 2017 budget, we're proposing for FY 16 and 17 a budget of, of a $116,708,000. Our budgets will typically vary from year to year and it mainly depends on the type of capital outlay that we're projecting. Uh, this year, next year, we're projecting a little bit more in capital outlay as well as some reserve funds. If you look at the airport trust main sources of funds, these are the airport charges and the major categories of funding. We have building rents, which is mainly comprised of uh, lease rates for buildings and hangars to include the terminal building. We have landing fees as well, which is a calculated rate per 1,000 pounds of landed weight. And we charge this to our passengers and freight carriers, and this is what offsets the cost of uh, operating the airfield at uh, Will Rogers World Airport. Our parking revenues are related to our public parking operation, and this is for all of the garages and surface lots that we offer to the public for parking. Our concession revenues are comprised of food and beverage and retail and rental car concessions. We also have fuel sales revenues, and these are in the form of fuel flowage fees, which is a calculated rate per gallon of, uh, of uh, fuel that is either retailed on the airport or for those operators who have agreements that have self-fueling privileges. And then we have other airport charges as well. Um, these are maintenance reimbursements, ground rentals, and apron fees, and these are components in uh, tenant leases which they pay on a monthly basis. So total airport charges to our tenants and users is $52,080,000. We have other sources of revenue as well. Uh, we still are receiving oil and gas revenues. Uh, we have wells on all three of the city airports. Our interest is on investments. We have passenger facility charges, which is the $4.50 fee that is used on a departure leg. This is a user fee that supplements the funding for our airport capital program and is primarily for eligible projects that are related to the movement of bags and passengers. We also have a $4.50 user fee for the customer facility charge, and this is the charge that is paying for the new rental car center and also the buses and also the rental car program going forward. And we have uh, various state and federal participation each year. These are mainly in the form of grants from the Federal Aviation Administration and the Oklahoma Aeronautics Commission for eligible projects on the airfield and sometimes equipment. So total other revenue is $19,232,000. We also have carryover. This mainly represents the Mike Monroney Aeronautical Center escrow account and also prior year revenues that support our capital program, $36,186,000. And then we're anticipating revenue bond proceeds of uh, $9,210,000. These are the portion of proceeds that we intend to use on construction in FY17. So the carryover, bond proceeds, and projected revenues of $71,312,000 uh, gives us the budget of $116,708,000. And looking at the airport's uses of funds and our operating expenditures, we have other services and fees, and this is the category where we fund most of our major contracts, such as the parking management contract, our janitorial, aircraft rescue and firefighting and security contract. We have also commodities, which are various services and supplies. We have debt requirements from prior financing of projects, such as the last terminal renovation, the most recent parking garage, and also the new rental car center. And then the transfer to the airport's cash fund, this is the department's operating account. So total operating expenditures are projected to be 43655000 I mentioned reserves earlier. These are funds estimated to occur in 2017 to be used on future capital. 4,752,000, and our capital outlay is projected to be 68,301,000, which balances the budget. I want to talk about several projects that we completed this year. We completed major projects, and the first one is the new consolidated rental car facility. This facility opened on March the 2nd, and so the, the cost here you see of 36,636,000 represents the construction cost as well as the purchase of the buses. 
the uh, five family of brands that we have rental car leases with represents nine individual brands and uh, all of them seem to be very happy with the new facility and we're transporting on average about 60,000 people a month on our buses between the facility and the terminal. We also completed a generator project. Uh, this is huge for the airport because whenever we had commercial power outages, we only had code backup power, which did not allow us to process passengers. Now we have that capability to be 100% self-sufficient. We had a project uh, that we are substantially complete with now. We had taxiway C and G, which are the taxiways that are just south of the terminal ramp, and this is two of the three taxiways that aircraft used to transition to the terminal ramp and runways and taxiways. We replaced the asphalt with concrete and the uh, cost of this project, uh, $8,459,000. We also completed our check baggage inspection system. Uh, this is a new system. It's a standard, two standard TSA system. We've not had that before. This replaced the system that we had installed after 9-11, which was a single feed system, which was very labor intensive and, and not that efficient. The new system uh, is much more efficient and it provides enhanced bag tracking and bag screening. At Wiley Post Airport, uh, we're doing a lot of improvements uh, the last couple of years and we have more going forward as you'll see. We completed the phase one to airfield improvements which was a joint seal project for the uh, west shorter parallel runway, 17 right and 35 left. We also added new airfield signage and lighting and electrical enhanced uh, the safety areas. $3,619,000. And we did a couple of projects at Mike Monroney. We have a lot in queue right now that we're working on, but a couple that we did complete. We combined three roof projects into one, $3,158,000, and then we completed a, a chiller project at the multi-purpose building. I want to talk about some of the upcoming projects that we have that are significant. As you know, when we contemplated the terminal expansion some months ago, we identified that there were some barriers that we needed to eliminate before we got into the bigger project and so as we started design it was determined that we would do an early site package necessary to remove these barriers. Um, to refresh your memory it's primarily the demolition of the cargo building and the realignment and relocation of several utilities. We have a couple of telecom communication private companies that we have to work with as, water, as well as some water and wastewater on the ramp. So the uh, number that you hear, see here, the $2,681,000 is for fiscal year 17. We already have been spending money on this project. Total project cost is estimated to be about $3.2 million. We're in design for the terminal expansion as well. Uh, we have just finished our review of the 60% plans and so we're moving forward. Uh, what you see here is budgeted to be an anticipated $10 million to be expended in 2017. The project budget is uh, still on track uh, to uh, be about $74.5 million. And just to remind you, the purpose of this project is mainly to increase gate capacity as we only have one gate that's not leased by airlines today. So our objective is to get more gate capacity as we try to improve our air service. We also want to improve some airport functionality, uh, such as we did in the last renovation. Uh, we'll be relocating police and, uh, and airport operations to new areas as well as moving the YMCA Military Welcome Center, which is currently in the cargo building, into the main building. And a main focus of this is to improve our passenger processing with a new consolidated eight-lane checkpoint that can be expanded to ten lanes in the future. And taking our existing checkpoints and converting those into meter greeter lobbies, we'll be bringing you a presentation in the next few months uh, on this design. Another significant project that we have is our parking and revenue control system. We'll be uh, doing that project, uh, awarding that very soon. We're anticipating to be about $3.7 million. Our existing system is out of date. It's very old. It can't be supported with parts or service agreements any longer. The new system will have uh, several enhancements. It will replace all the infrastructure, such as the ticket spitters, the dispensers that you see here. It will be network connected, which will help as well. It's going to assist us in a big way in being able to track our revenue much better. And we'll have some added features that we're building into the system, such as pay on foot kiosk, and we can have uh, either level by level or space by space counts in our parking garages. A few months ago, we came to the trust with a new signage project for the airport. This is an overhaul of all the signage on the roadways and in our parking garages and also in the terminal building. The first phase of that is underway. We're anticipating uh, $3 million to be spent on a multi-year project that will eventually cost a little over two, uh, 
$5 million. Our first phase, I'd say we're 50% through with design on this, and that's to uh, design and construct the roadway signage as well as all the signage in the garages. The terminal signage will be done once we do the terminal project. A challenging area for us is the Station 2 parking uh, area. This is the 2 Garage A. This is the first station elevators and escalator that you see in the uh, pedestrian tunnel uh, when you come down from the terminal. This connects the tunnel to the short-term parking. The challenge here is the 24-inch wide escalator. It's just too narrow to, for today's bags, and it's difficult for people to manage this escalator. Uh, most people try to use the escalator, although we have two elevators there, and we're currently evaluating alternatives to this uh, station, too, and uh, we'll be doing improvements this next year. Uh, anticipated budget for this is $1.5 million. The other challenges that we have are, uh, are 39 escalators, elevators, and moving walkways, and these are out from time to time, and so we have um, our on-call A&E and a specialist uh, working as a sub under them to evaluate the status and conditions of all these 39 systems, which are going 24-7, and, and they are punished uh, much more than, a, than an escalator traditionally would be, say, in an in office building or a shopping mall. Um, so our budget each year over several years is $400,000 to uh, prioritize repairs and our replacement. We're anticipating over the lifetime of the project we'll be spending a little more than $2 million. We have an ongoing project, a little over $8 million to uh, replace the ends of uh, Taxiway H, which are currently asphalt with concrete. Um, we're about through with that project. We're still um, going to budget about half a million dollars to finish that up, hopefully in fiscal year 17. The center portion of that taxiway was already converted from asphalt to uh, concrete, and that's basically to get it uh, more strength-worthy and, and weight-bearing loads so that we can ready ourselves for heavier aircraft on the east side of the airport as we develop the east side at Will Rogers. Uh, at, for general aviation, uh, I mentioned phase one we completed. We're underway, well underway with phase two improvements. This is joint ceiling the main runway, which is 17 left and 35 right. It also includes airfield signage and lighting and other pavement work. We're budgeting $639,000 for FY17. The total project cost is a little over $5.8 million. And we also have the last phase, phase three, uh, which will be to rehabilitate taxiways A and B and replace also associated lighting and signage. We're anticipating FY17 funds to be uh, about $2.7 million. Total project cost for this um, project is about $4.1 uh, million. At Mike Monroney, there were just too many projects to list, so I grouped them up. Uh, we've got lots of buildings. We're going to be doing electrical and mechanical projects, almost $13 million. We've got several building improvement projects uh, in the queue as well, uh, be, uh, spending a little over $8 million. And then there are various streets, such as Mike Monroney Boulevard, which uh, we have lots of parking lots that the trust is responsible for, and we have apron repairs, which are being done over at Hangar 8 and 9 at the Mike Monroney Aeronautical Center, and so a little over $5.4 million budgeted for all of, of those improvements. And looking at the summary of our ongoing and new projects for our capital program, uh, each year I try to break out our airports and the capital expenditures that we're anticipating, and I always carve out Mike Monroney because it is a significant part of our business. Um, so you see the total capital outlay there of $68,301,000. Uh, we have lots of pots of money to accomplish our capital objectives, and you can see that in the table below. Um, starting at the left, the AIP program is the airport improvement program with the FAA, and that's where we're anticipating the grant funds for our uh, Will Rogers projects and also at Wiley Post. I mentioned what the passenger facility charge uh, revenues are for, uh, projecting uh, about $6.5 million. And the tenant maintenance funds, a little over $26.3 million, and this is coming from those maintenance reimbursements that I talked about before from leases uh, that are incorporated as a part of the lease payments from tenants. And then we have a lot of uh, airport trust-funded projects this year. That's the one thing that's probably more different this year than other years is we have a little over $30 million. And when you think about the revenue control system for the parking operation, um, we're putting more trust dollars in the Wiley Post projects because they're necessary, the Portland Avenue north side uh, development, and also all the escalators that we'll be dealing with. It does increase the trust budget a little bit. Um, so we believe that we can uh, adequately achieve our capital objectives. Um, and the major 
uh, cash fund budget changes, uh, really, uh, we, we are organized here by line of business. Uh, this is, again, the department's operating account of $17,602,000, and there, we're not anticipating any new positions in the new budget at this time, uh, but that can always change. Um, changes to the cash fund from last year, we have a slight increase in insurance benefits and salaries of 188000 and then a slight increase in city-provided services of 48000 for a total of $236,000. Um, that's the presentation, so we'll be happy okay. to entertain any questions if anyone has any. Burn the budget. I request your approval. Mark, on the, the uh, terminal expansion, when's that anticipated being completed? We have right now 2019. I will tell you there's a couple of uh, milestones that we have to meet. One is uh, an, a consultation with the airlines, of which we don't anticipate any issues there because the airlines have already been in full support of the project. Um, the area that we're not quite sure of what the timeline is going to be is the passenger facility charge application that we have to make with the FAA. Um, there are a lot of airports that are uh, frankly getting a little bit bogged down with the Southwest region on that. and. We're going to be starting that process very, very soon. So that's the timeline that we want to make sure we have that application in because 65 to 70 percent of our terminal project will be funded by PFC. So it's important to get okay. that application approved. Okay. We have a motion for approval. So moved. Second. Any questions? Further questions? Okay. Record your votes. It's approved unanimously. Thank you. Director's report. Mm -hmm. Well, for my director's report. Um, I think it's a treat this morning. Uh, we actually produced a commercial video um, regarding travel tips. And with everything that's going on uh, with traveling public now and the long lines with TSA, I think it's more important than ever that we try to do what we can to get uh, the word out to travelers as to some travel tips to help them get through the checkpoint a little bit quicker because we're all in this together, as Karen has uh, themed this video. So I, she's going to take us through it, Karen. Thanks, Mark. Good morning, uh, trustees. Yes, um, we're all painfully aware of all the stories that have been going on about the long waits at airports around the country, including Will Rogers. We're not really anticipating the hour and a half to two hour waits that some of the larger airports are seeing right now, but we are uh, anticipating longer waits, waits that we're not used to in Oklahoma City. So um, one of the things that we've learned is that even when the lines are long, if everybody's doing what they're supposed to do, the lines can move pretty quickly. And so we kind of wanted to support TSA in trying to get the messaging out there as well as, you know, try to improve the, the experience for our customers. So what we've done is kicked off a four-week advertising campaign entitled, We're All in This Line Together, Arrive Early, Travel Smart. Um, as I mentioned, the uh, it is a four-week campaign primarily focused on a 30-second commercial that will air on the local broadcast stations as well as YouTube and we'll support that with collateral, collateral in the Will Rogers World Airport Terminal building. Uh, we'll support it on our web and with social media. The television commercial will air on all of the primary local stations, all the, the network stations. We'll have 32 commercials per week with a total of 128 commercials over the four-week period. We will be doing a YouTube campaign, and this will be uh, geo-targeted to the Oklahoma City metro area, and it will be even uh, more targeted to people who want to view videos about any travel, any travel-related types of videos. So with this campaign, we're actually guaranteed 28,000 true views, which means that at minimum 28,000 people will watch the entire 30-second commercial, which is pretty good. So um, with that, I'm going to show you the commercial as well as some images of some of the additional collateral that we're doing. Peak travel season is upon us. We're all in this line together. Wear shoes that are easy to remove. Skip the bling. It makes metal detectors ring. Make sure all liquids, lotions, and potions fit into that quart-sized bag. How quickly we get through depends on you. Arrive early and travel smart with Will Rogers World Airport. To learn more, visit flyokc.com. So I'll show that again in a minute because I know 30 seconds is very quick. 
Um, but some of the things that we're doing in the terminal building, these what you're looking at now are what we're calling stanchion toppers, which are a little uh, signs that go on top of the stanchions in the queue line, so it gives people the opportunity to look at uh, some of the things they should be doing before they actually get to the screening process. Believe it or not, all of these things, none of them are new. They've been in place for a long time, but during the summertime we kind of see a transition between the business traveler, road warrior type of traveler to the leisure or uh, infrequent traveler, and sometimes they just don't know the things that they're supposed to do. So we want to try to encourage them, hopefully looking at this while they're standing in line. Um, additionally, we will have some posters throughout the terminal building and on our information, our digital information screens. And we will be supporting it on our website with a web page dedicated to that as well as in social media. Um, one of the things I did want to mention, there are still going to be times when you come out to the airport and you're going to get through the line really quickly. So we don't want to discourage people in allowing enough time because in the summertime we just don't know all the times that the, the lines will get long. But I like to remind people that there are some things, um, some amenities that they can enjoy once they do get through the checkpoint. Uh, we, our Jet Sets program has really done really, really well, which, the, which is the live music program. Delaware North, our food concessionaire, has just really uh, embraced this, and they are they are having live music uh, three out of uh, five days a week, and then of course we have two uh, sponsored performances a week. We now have several pieces of public art, including the recent acquisition of the Allen Hauser pieces that people can enjoy. Um, Human Animal Link of Oklahoma. There are pet uh, dog therapy teams. They come out throughout the month, ro roam through the concourse and pre-security as well, giving people the opportunity to relieve some stress by petting the four-legged part of the team. Um, and of course, free Wi-Fi. So we like to remind people that there are, there are some things to do if you do get through the line quickly when you do all of these things. So I'm gonna wrap it up, just play the commercial one more time. Put it on your Facebook page, tweet it out, make your mom watch it, whatever you can do to help us get the word out, we appreciate it. Peak travel season is upon us. We're all in this line together. Wear shoes that are easy to remove. Skip the bling, it makes metal detectors ring. Make sure all liquids, lotions, and potions fit into that quart-sized bag. How quickly we get through depends on you. Arrive early and travel smart with Will Rogers World Airport. To learn more, visit flyokc.com. Okay, thank you, Karen. Any further questions? Okay. Thanks, Karen. Thank you, Mark. Item five is Will Rogers World Airport. Mark. Thank you. Under Will Rogers' uh, request approval for item A to approve the services agreement with Triad Design Group Incorporated for the Thomas P. Stafford Building parking lot repair at Mike Maroney Aeronautical Center for $225,200. Item B is approving the contract for professional services with Olson Associates to repair the Mike Maroney Boulevard. Uh, this is an amount of $372,265. C is to accept the completed project for the three roofs we combined at Mike Monroney with Terra Construction Incorporated. Item D is approving change order one to the contract with Wynn Construction for the Hangar 8 and 9 building envelope repairs project at Mike Monroney Aeronautical Center adding $19,287.80. E is approving change order two with uh, RDNJ uh, doing business as ATEC paving. This is for the concrete apron repair at Mike Monroney deducting $7,128. F is adopting the resolution, ratifying the director's actions, authorizing some asbestos abatement at the multi-purpose building at Mike Monroney Aeronautical Center, utilizing a contract with Intercon Services for $116,213,050. Uh, G is consenting to the assignment of the contract for professional services for the reconstruction of the Station 2 uh, area and the evaluation of all of our people moving equipment from Lidos to Benham Design. Item H is approving change order 2 to the construction contract with Alco Construction Company. This is for the Carnac Cargo Annex Building Upgrades Project. We're changing the completion date to June 23rd. 
I is accepting the recommendation on the bids uh, opened on April 26 for the exterior tile replacement project, awarding this to ResTech for $136,203, approving the contract and bond subject to review for the municipal counselor's office. J is approving the plans and project manual by Lidos for the U.S. Uh, Marshall's parking lot, advertising bids uh, be opened on June 28th. K is approving Amendment 4 to the contract with TTK Construction. This is for the Portland Avenue realignment project, adding $50,765.55. L is adopting the resolution, uh, ratifying the director's action for the purchase of environmental site assessment services from Intercon using city contract for $47,844.40. M is adopting the resolution, waiving competitive bidding, and authorizing the agreement with NFAX Incorporated for all of the telephone electronic assistance for our flight information display systems. Those are all the items under Will Rogers, Mr. Buster. Okay. Any questions? Okay. Record your votes. That's approved unanimously. Item six under general. Asking you to receive the delinquent accounts receivable report, the construction project status report, and the budget to actual report as of April 30th. B is approving the project manual by Frankfurt Shore Bruiser for pavement and repairs uh, contract, advertising bids to be open on June 28th. C is approving Amendment 2 to our facilities maintenance engineering agreement with uh, Frankfurt Shore Bruiser Associates. This is renewing the agreement for one year. D is a consent to the assignment of our on-call maintenance engineering agreements with uh, Lidos, uh, transferring that to Benham Design. Item E is adopting the resolution authorizing the purchase of janitorial supplies from Southwest Paper utilizing the city contract for 258000 Those are items under general. Okay. Any question? Motion? Second. Okay, record your votes. It's approved unanimously. Item 7 is lease and other agreements. Item A is to approve the supplement agreement number 5 with Aero Oklahoma LLC. This is confirming the completion of the additional facility that they've recently constructed and extending the term of the agreement at Will Rogers. B is approving uh, amendment number 1 to the non-federal reimbursable agreement we had with the Federal Aviation Administration, Mike Monroney Aeronautical Center. This is a refund of $220,374 for remodeling the headquarters building. Item C is approving supplement number two with the passenger airline operating and lease agreement with Southwest Airlines. This is deducting 6,160 square feet of cargo space. Uh, item D is approving supplement one to the agreement with Metro Technology Center School District number 22 for their premises and facilities uh, beginning uh, the new agreement beginning July the 1st. Item E and F are supplement lease agreements with the Mid First Bank and Bank of America, respectively, for the automated teller machines that they have in the terminal building. Item G is approving supplement number uh, number one for the uh, rental car concession lease agreements with all of the five major uh, companies which we have agreements with in the rental car center. And then last H is adopting uh, ground services agreements with various companies providing ground transportation at Will Rogers. Those are all the leases and agreements. Okay. We have a motion? So moved. Second. Record your votes. It's approved unanimously. Item 8 is uh, resolution. Request approval. Okay. Motion? Second. Record your votes, and that's approved unanimously. Any comments from trustees, staff, or citizens? Okay. We're adjourned. Thank you.